In 2019, Dark Arbor Lodge, the creative group I'm in, did an art show based on H.P. Lovecraft's Shadow Over Innsmouth, and part of that show, for me, was creating a performance suit based on the Deep Ones. So I started just trying to do a few very quick, rough sketches to sort of get my mind back in fishman mode. <laughs> And I didn't really come up with a design on paper, uh, and this suit wound up really being more of a something made up as I went along. I started with my usual EVA crown, and I really wanted to try and see if I could use EVA as a, a finished surface, the sculpted surface, which I hadn't tried before. So as you can see, the ba basic mask is really simple. It's a single piece of EVA, just sort of bent and formed and cut a little bit. And this was going to be built on my daughter, Zena, uh, who is only five foot tall. So it was a bit of a challenge there. So I used a bunch of Dremel tools, some heat tools, and started getting some decent forms uh, that I was okay with. I really need to work a lot more with EVA sculpturally to try and turn it into something. But it was something that was working well enough. I did a quick uh, gill mechanism based on the mouth. Unfortunately, I built this on my head and not Zena's. Zena's a foot shorter than I am, so there were some issues down the line on it. I changed the, uh, the sort of dome head on it, which I didn't like. I wanted something flatter that would lead to more of a massive neck back section, so it was more of a solid fish. You can see the white version, which was the final version that I did. Uh, much more slanted. Again, this was all EVA foam inside and out. Painted it up very quickly, very simply. Uh, I added uh, uh, cabochon eyes and uh, EVA teeth. All very soft, very flexible, very light. And then it was really a matter of getting Xena to test it to see how she could move in it, how she, uh, how comfortable she was with it, how functional it was, how how well she could see. And as I say, this really was something that was just designed as I went along and, and built as I went along. I had Xena stop by for test fits whenever I could, and she's very good about that. But there were long stretches where I had a lot to do before I could actually size them up on Z and see uh, if they really worked or not. But the... Uh, I was happy with the overall fish head, but not really the eyes. They weren't bright enough, so I redid those. Uh, I was much happier with them afterwards. I just thought it gave the uh, mask a lot more focus. And it catches the light really nicely uh, at some point. And I started beefing up the colors on it, getting it a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more alive. And then it was time to work on the suit, which is going to be a real challenge, because as you can see, Xena is not a big, massive... Uh, fish monster. <laughs> so it was all about, uh, here you can see the uh, uh, the boots I made for her. She's elevated a good six inches or more, so I, at least I got that much more uh, height for her. Uh, I was originally gonna, just going to do EVA big fins, but I changed that. The body was basically, as you can see, cut foam uh, with, you know, vents in it for movement. Uh, you know, the, you can see the feet being built up there. The back got built up very, very much larger to give that mass that I, I wanted to get out of it. And that way it kept everything on, on Zena's back so she had more room to move in the front. So there were big, big gaps in the foam to allow movement. And uh, the, then the big problem was this head movement because as you can see, there's gigantic gaps back there uh, that's a lot of movement to get. So I did a, a series of plates, overlapping plates, for the back of the neck. And these were held together by uh, elastic uh, threads. And then when it was all painted up, they, uh, they sort of accordion, but overlap accordion style, moved really, really, really well. Um, the hands uh, were just built up. EVA uh, for like the claw sections and then thin foam for the webbing covered with some very thin material. I used mold latex for the webbing because I could put it on thick and then just sort of um, 
form the, the, the ridges and things in it. And the rest of it was pretty much just cotton batting and latex. I tinted the latex black, except for the fins, which was the bold latex, which I wanted lighter anyway. The fit at the neck was surprisingly good right off the bat, so it was right into the paint room for it. And I used a, a lot of uh, different colors, different styles of colors uh, on this one than I normally do to get that sort of fishy look to it. And then when I finally had everything pretty much done, I had a test session with Xena to see, and obviously there's very, very dramatic tonal differences in the suit at this point, uh, which is the whole reason I actually asked her to try this on. So there, there, there was a lot of balancing that I had to do with the suit, color-wise, tone-wise, and, uh, and also just to make sure that Xena could really uh, move well with it and feel comfortable with it. And there were, some, there were a lot of changes along the way. But once uh, I got, had them all ironed out, I thought the suit really sort of pulled together, had a nice look to it. This was before it was actually glossed up. It looked even better glossed up. But it was a good, a big hit at the show. And, you know, uh, it came out pretty good for a, a sort of thrown together suit. And, you know, Xena was pretty happy with it. She was so happy she was always dancing. But the suit moved really well, really easily. It did the things I wanted it to do. And, you know, the eyes are, are still a good focus. I do a lot different if I had to do it all over again. I, I would actually plan it out a little bit rather than just sort of struggle my way through it. But it's a fun suit. Hopefully I get a chance to use it again in something. That's uh, my daughter Dana on the right, Xena, my daughter Xena in the suit having fun.